What's going on everybody and welcome back uh, to the channel now today we've got the man cricket Raz original links always in the description of course this guy He has incredible content. We reacted to a few of his videos now. He's great But we've got a letter from my heart to my team an end of an era a hope for the future Yeah, this is kind of a tribute to Virat Kohli, you know, obviously now he won't be the captain of the the white ball T20 team won't be the captain of our seat. It's a new era. Things are changing. Rohit Sharma is now going to take the captaincy. They're going to have a new coach. It's it's a new Indian thing. It's a new Indian team. As much as you don't want to, you know, sometimes people don't like change. Change is all right. well, not always good, but I think this will be the right thing. So hey, if you guys are new, subscribe. Shut out. I'm genuinely amazed how many emotions a simple game can generate. Hey, it's facts. not life or death, right? It's not the end of the world. But still, sitting there, watching India getting knocked out. Mm. <laughs> tell, tell me one thing. How can what is hands down the strongest lineup in the world yeah. lose so miserably? <laughs> so rather than watching it further and getting frustrated, I decided to just go ahead and figure out the answer. Okay, not through that's any easier. conjectures though, but through hard numbers. Okay. This is an attempt of a heartbroken man to <laughs> soothe his aching heart. This Damn, is, this is kind of sad. This is an autopsy. An autopsy, of a loss. wow. Let's start from the simple question that frankly should never be asked in a World Cup. What's that? How much was the pitch at fault? Now, in the first two matches that India played, okay. we hit a grand total of six sixes and only two wickets. Mm. But both the times, losing the toss and batting first. Mm. Till that point, out of the total 16 matches that were played, 13 were lost by the side batting first. Yeah. So three victories that came. So the three victories. Afghanistan batted first against Scotland. You would hope to win that. West Indies batted first and won. There you go. And Afghanistan beat... So, let's be honest. Two of these games, they were going to win regardless. But this game... Yeah. Had come against Namibia, Scotland and Bangladesh. Furthermore, the Bangladesh match was during the day when the due factor didn't count. And mm. that's the crux of the issue. In UAE, yeah. the due that sets in during the night matches changes the nature of the pitch itself. Yeah. It goes from being a banshee-like creature during the day into a purring kitten. At night, hey! the difference is so lopsided that Twitter was joking at a point, do the toss and just go home. <laughs> there is no need to actually play the match. So is that it? It was the pitch's fault, the players were perfect. Not actually. There were issues. If you take up the T20 record for the past 5 years, then chasing, we have won 22 out of 32 games. That's a 68% win rate. However, while batting first, we again have 22 wins, but in 42 matches. That's a 53% win rate, a difference of 15% with the same lineup. An in-depth search of those losses gives us a simple fact. We tend to play very conservatively when we bat first, which has cost us before. Case in point, the semi-finals in the 2016 T20 World Cup. But let's focus on this team for now. And I would like to tell a story about it. In March, before the IPL, Virat had said that he would practice opening in this IPL so that he can open with Rohit in the World Cup. Then yeah, and that's the thing that I kind of didn't understand. You know, it was Virat. He's opening for RCB. He'll open in the World Cup. It's going to be this magical thing where Rohit Hitman Sharma and Virat Kohli open together. But then Kao Rahul was, you know... One of the best batsmen in the entire IPL on these exact same pitches. Now, I'm not saying that they went with the wrong opening partnership because at the end of the day, you know, those first two matches weren't great. But in the in the warm-up matches, they looked great as an opening pair. It, 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 yeah, I don't know. It... Fast forward to the second weird. half of the IPL where he said that he sees Ishan but, Kishan yeah, in exactly. that role. Yeah, exactly. But... Just before the tournament started, he confirmed that KL Rahul is going to be the opener. Mm. And after the loss to Pakistan, when a journalist asked about the possibility That's of right. Ishan opening, Virat scoffed at that suggestion. Yeah. Come match day, out came Ishan Kishan. <laughs> now, I do understand the strategy behind sending Ishan, but what I want to show you is the confusion. Exactly! The Last pause of the video, I won't do too much pausing, but they, they just seemed so unsettled. Virat didn't even know what was happening. It's like Ravi Shastri didn't know what was happening until the, the 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 toss of the bloody coin went up. It just there were so many things that seemed unsettled 
in the Indian team. lineup. Because after the squad was declared, they did not play a single game together as a team. The first match that they played together was directly the warm-up matches of the T20 tournament. Mm. Now credit for credit is due. <laughs> right before the T20 World Cup, which was originally to be played in India, yeah. in the original schedule laid out by the BCCI, there was a five-match T20 series to be played against South Africa, where all such minor kings were to be worked out. But once COVID's the second wave hit, not only was the World Cup shifted out of India, but even the IPL had to be rescheduled. Now here, it would be very easy for me to just blame the BCCI and the players for putting the IPL above the World Cup. <laughs> but from March all the way up to December, the entire schedule was jam-packed yeah. with continuous foreign tours. Now the BCCI could go ahead and cancel those two, it's the BCCI, they can't do anything. But rather than risking the legal and financial complications that they would have to suffer, they decided to cancel the only home series in the slot. Hedging their bets on the fact that the IPL being played on the same grounds on which T20 would be played would be the perfect opportunity for the players to get adjusted to the conditions there. The plan sounds good on paper, right? Yeah. yeah. There is just a tiny bit of a problem though. In the second half of the IPL, barring KL Rahul, the rest of the entire batting lineup died a miserable death. What's this? So the second, this is the stats from the second half of the IPL. Okay. Okay, died a miserable death. That seems a bit brutal. Um, all right, Virat, eight innings, average 25. It's okay. Sharma, average 20. Yeah, Rowett did not have a great second um, leg in the UAE. Pant, only average 22. Rahul, who, you know, was the orange cap leader all the way up until the final when, um, was it Guykwood who passed him, I think it was? Um, or Faf, I can't remember. Um, so Rahul was great. Surakami Yadav, again, not great. Ishan Kishan started really poor, then came good at the end. Jadeja didn't get many opportunities to bat. And Hardik Pandya didn't play very well. Yeah. Economy. Yeah. They, mm, Ishan wow. Kishan and Surya Kumar Yadav I did have a good knock here and there. But beyond that, the rest of the lineup was out. Mm. Completely out. So is it really a surprise that after those first two World Cup matches, in spite of playing the complete quota of 20 overs, we were dead last in aggressive shots played rating. Really? And fourth behind Ireland, Papua New Guinea and Netherlands in worst time shots. That is not a list you ever want to be on being compared to Papua New Guinea. All respect to Papua New Guinea, but that is not where you want to be. The funny thing is, it's not even as if we had to send this lineup. The last day to make changes was on 15th October. That was the last day of the IPL yeah. when all the data was laid down before you. Yeah. And the only change we did was replacing Akshar Patel with Shardul Thakur. Ridiculous. Which I do understand. But was that your takeaway from this data? That the so silly! And that's why it made no sense to me that there wasn't anyone like a Rutaraj Gaikwad in the goddamn squad. Why was Gaikwad not in the squad? Why was Chahal not in the squad? They had just played seven, eight games on these exact pitches and had dominated. Especially Yuzi. Why was he not in the squad? We'll never, well, honestly, never Balling know. needs work here, not the batting. Now I know what all of you are going to say. If they were really so bad, then how do you explain the sheer demolition of Afghanistan, Scotland and Namibia? And for that, I would like to repeat the answer given by nearly each and every cricket analyst no out pressure. there right now. Really? Mentality and pressure. Yeah. But let me prove there was this no, there was with actual data. First, you cannot compare a World Cup with any other tournament. Not the IPL, nor any other series. Given how strong our lineup has been for the past decade, we have more often than not been the favourites to win the World Cup. Yep. Hence, <laughs> the expectations have been through the roof. But in this team, by the time this World Cup rolled around, only two people had actually experienced the burden of those expectations in a final. Habajan, Api Singh, Srinath, Ashwin, okay. Um, Ashwin, wow. Ashwin has been in a lot of winning teams, wow. Um, Bhuvaneshwar Kumar, Amit Mishra, Ishant Sharma, Umesh Yadav. Um, Sh Where's... um? Okay. And then that's had a really cool top. graph. That's Virat and Rohit. Oh. Didn't play. Yeah, I was wondering where they were. Virat. There's Virat. Suresh Raina. Sat wow. Sachin. Wow. That is damning. Shikadawan. Murali Vijay. Wow. Dhoni. Look at that. Look how good Dhoni was. Like, shit, man. 
Darn for it. the rest ah. of the lineup, even starting Sorry, from 2015, I... we have lost each and every knockout match that we have ever played, all except a match against Bangladesh, <laughs> where Rohit and Virat had actually carried us to a win. Oh, the champ. So, yeah, that's this team either had players who had never experienced such pressure before or have been burdened by repeated losses under that same pressure. True. To add a cherry on top, the first match was against Pakistan. Yeah. <laughs> it's a well-known fact, isn't it? It's fine if you lose the World Cup, but you cannot lose a match against Pakistan. <laughs> and after that, we had a virtual knockout match against New Zealand. Yeah. That means the pressure of being knocked out in the group stages itself and the storm that it will bring. Mm. An actual good comparison to this is the three consecutive World Cup wins from Australia, yeah! which were won over a period of nine years. You can see through the chart here that each and every time they had five to six players who had actually won before in the lineup mm. who could handle experience in a lineup. People underestimate how big and how important experience is in a lineup. It is the so pressure important. of a must win situation. And I believe that was the same idea for which yeah, Tony exactly, had been that sent is here true. to be that pillar for the younger guys. Yeah. But a mentor in the end is just that a mentor. He had already? no real say, nor could he take the field. And mental strength is not something that you can just generate in a few days. It's a process, practice and mastered over a period of time. Now there are other factors here too, no doubt. Packed schedule, bio-bubble fatigue, but I can't quantify its exact effect. Hence, this is my answer. We lost because we had an undercooked, out-of-form team, which was put into an inordinate amount of pressure, which could have still been fine, if not for the pitch and that's why we lost but going through these numbers i realized something what's that it's not all bad it's a fact that we have had the best win rate by hold on hold on i missed it wait where is it hold on i want to see the stats it's a fact that we okay odi win rate um india where's the percentage okay one where's australia third not bad south africa well um they say the last decade, so that's why South Africa, England, New Zealand, Pakistan, Afghanistan. Damn, Sri Lanka, all the way down there, that is sad. We have had the best win rate by any team in any form. ICC win rate. Wow, Australia second. Nice. New Zealand. Matt, for the past decade. Wow. It's all test win rate. India, South Africa, Australia. So fact that in the past year, we have conquered back. T20. 64%. Pakistan 60. Where's Australia? Damn. We're all the way down there. Well, we just won the World Cup, so that'll probably go up a bit. Bastion after Bastion that were deemed impossible in the past. And it is also a fact that most of the time, people don't learn till they get a good kick in their uh... bum. So, there is a World Cup <laughs> next year. Australia. Come under Rahul Dravid with a team that has already gone through the worst outcome that there can be. And with a board that may be slow to move. But when it does move, I just tend to remember another World Cup that we had lost in the group stages. And what happened? A year later. Oh, well, not a year later. Was it three? Let's brush ourselves up. Let's get back into the saddle. Our team will need us soon. Hope you have a good day today. Thank you. And I hope your dreams and mine come true next year. Hey. Thank you for watching this video. No, thank you. That was uh, that was nice. He did say that he hopes that his dreams and my dreams both come true next year. I have a feeling we have different dreams. I feel like his dream is that India win the World Cup. My dream is that Australia go back to back. So, you know, that would be, you know, we probably got different dreams. So look, maybe you won't wish me happy dreams <laughs> for next year. But hey, that is going to cap it off, guys. Hey, this was a great video. Um, I just want to finish off with India should, the BCCI for that matter, you know, the next T20 World Cup is in Australia in 2000 and... Is it 2020? It's next year, 2022, right? So, imagine imagine if the BCCI allowed Indian players to come play in the Big Bash League in Australia, T20. Imagine the experience and the... The experience they would get from playing a full season, or at least half a season, or at least a few games of BBL in Australia, in our conditions. Wait, so when does the Big Bash, when's the World Cup? Because that actually could be after the World Cup. But if they played the BBL, you know, if they were playing this year's Big Bash League, 
they would get a climate. I mean, it's all a scheduling sort of thing, isn't it? But it would definitely help if they could play at least this year a few games. Because we're seeing the um, the WBBL, the Indian women are playing, and that's going to be massive for the women when they come and tour in Australia um, countless times. So, hey, that is going to cap it off, guys. What, there's no more to this video, is it? No. So, hey, that's going to cap it off, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.